in this video we're going to look at electrical power. So we have the setup as below, basically a component like some sort of electric motor or, or heater etc with a potential difference across it and a current passing through it. So let's just draw that on here. So we've got a current flowing from, uh, remember, from positive to negative. This is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal. Uh, we have a potential difference across it, and we said the cell has an electromotive force of epsilon. So what is the work done by the charge carriers moving through this, this component in a given time? Well, we remember that, basically going back to this video here, uh, the idea was that the potential difference across it, across a component, is just the work done moving through that component divided by its charge. So what we need to do is times this potential difference by this charge to get the work done moving through it. So let's just do that first to get the work done moving through this component. So we know that basically what we're saying is that the work done just in general um, is the, so the work done moving through it in a given time uh, is, is going to be uh, the, the potential difference V times by the charge Q. We've actually seen that formula before, but the idea is just the work done moving through a component is the potential difference across that component, which here is V, times by the charge moving through that component, which is Q. But we don't have anything written here for the charge, right? We have the current and we have the potential difference, but we don't have the charge potential difference. So uh, kind of thinking about that, let's now let's come to thinking about the power. Well, actually, first, what we can do here is actually write this as if we say we're moving through a, a, a time delta T, so we've got a time delta t, then we know that the 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 charge moving through that will be delta q. So our potential uh, our our work done is basically v delta q when we're thinking about this time frame. So then what we can do is write down that we know actually what the formula for current is uh, in terms of this charge because remember we go back to here and we see that we can write the delta q is just i delta t. The idea that the amount of charge that's passed through a point in a given time delta t is just given by uh, u times the current by that time because current is just the flow of charge. So if we do that what we can see is we can write that w is basically v i delta t. So you take your potential difference, you times it by your current, you times it by the amount of time you're interested in, and that tells you the work done by charge carriers uh, in that time. So what's its power? Well, remember that power is just your work divided by the time you're interested in. So uh, the power is your work per unit time. But then we can realize we can just write in this formula for work we have above and see that P is just going to be, well, W is V delta Q, uh, V I delta T. So V I, delta t divided by delta t and we realize that we can just cancel off these delta t's and see that our power is just our voltage times by our current. So what we see is that the power is just the voltage uh, of the potential difference across a component. Uh, so the power, sorry, the amount of energy transferred per second to a component, so the power in the component, is just the potential difference across the component times by the current through the component. This formula for electrical power is very important and we're going to return to it quite a bit. Hey guys. To continue watching this video and unlock hundreds of other super concise and exam board specific A-level physics videos, just click the snap revised smiley face. Join me today and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.